Hello, this is the AVIT department for the Westminster Computer Lab. Uh, today we want to show you how you can use software as in the teacher account to control all the student workstations uh, while you are teaching. It's not necessary that you use it uh, for your entire teaching session, uh, but it is very, very useful, uh, for example, at the end of the teaching session to quickly shut down, log out and shut down all workstations um, simultaneously, in fact, within two seconds. So it is a very, very valuable tool. Um, how you do this is you would log into the teacher account, and as mentioned in previous um, lessons, um, several icons are on this desktop which are very very important uh, in a previous uh, video that you should have viewed on startup procedures um, you would point and double click on the start workstations which would begin all of the workstations it is highly highly recommended after you start all the workstations to uh, to uh, log in to every single account that is on the workstation. For example, if you're using a session to teach the JAM students, uh, then I would uh, strongly recommend to log in to all workstations JAM 1 through to JAM 7. The reason for this is it makes it easier at the end of the session to log out and shut down the uh, systems very, very quickly, in fact, within two, second, two seconds, which is a great convenient for the teachers. You don't necessarily have to use uh, uh, computer management software for the entire duration of your teaching session, but it is uh, highly worthwhile to use it, if not for anything else, then to quickly shut down the computer lab. To start it, you would point and double click onto the computer lab management icon. Uh, for the first time that you logged in, you'll be requested to type in the same password as you were requested to log into your teacher account. As you should see right now, all of the workstations are displayed and currently displaying what is, is in the student desktop at this point in time. For example, if there were applications that were open, you would actually see the applications open on their screen as well. Uh, just a slight warning, there is a one second delay between what will show up onto the student's workstation and what shows up here. But it is a very interesting way to take a look very, very quickly and seeing who is doing what at, at what point. A very comforting for the teacher to know exactly what is happening if there's been any changes that have occurred. There are some interesting features uh, with this uh, particular application. Um, one of the greatest advantages is the ability to focus in on a particular workstation. Uh, this is uh, valuable for uh, two points of view. Let me just demonstrate this by going into a particular workstation. For example, if I wanted to go into workstation 3, you would just go to this icon, this display, and uh, point and double click. And when you and select the actual um, desktop. When you do this, now you see that we have full focus on that student desktop itself. It will be displayed up onto the data display unit, uh, which is a very, very useful feature because if you're training one student, uh, you can have the other students take a look up at the front of the class and see what is happening so they could actually learn while you're teaching that student and then they can apply it themselves. Another useful feature is, um, as a teacher, I'm moving this cursor, this mouse pointer, um, and it is actually moving the mouse pointer on the uh, student's uh, desktop. Um, so that's a very interesting thing. The student can actually take control of their mouse, but the teacher can override or uh, use it to um, launch something. For example, if the student if I'm, uh, the teacher is mentioning to the student, let's uh, launch the tux paint program, for example, and the student said, I don't know where that is. From the comfort of a chair, the, uh, and without hovering around the student, standing over the student, you could be sitting down and uh, uh, bring up the student's uh, desktop um, um, as the focus, and then gently guide the mouse down to the particular icon which you'd like to launch. You could actually launch it yourself. So for example, I as an instructor am going to 
launch the Tux program, and it will, and it is actually launching at that student workstation. Although we're seeing it um, up at the front uh, through the data display unit. Now, now uh, that, that's very, very interesting. It allows the teacher to take a little bit more control. I'm just going to close this application right now and return back to the original screen. And um, a high recommendation of this is the teacher has a lot of control here. It might be better to just gently guide the student in, into the areas. This is a, an art form to itself. In other words, say, oh, that icon to launch the application is here. But perhaps allow the student to do that uh, because uh, you want the student to learn to do this and students may resent the fact that you're taking total control over a session. I know I would do that if someone was doing that to me. So again, you want to have, uh, you want to use some common sense here as an instructor and use this as a guiding tool, not necessarily controlling the entire show, unless that's the purpose. To go back to the original screen, uh, move up to the very top of the uh, screen and click onto the quit button and now it returns back to the overview of all of the workstations. There are some other interesting features that you can use. For example, um, if you find that you're giving a demonstration in class um, up at the front and the students are not listening, uh, you do have a way to lock all of the workstations. As you know, notice right now, the, uh, it looks like there's a padlock that shows up for all of the desktops and in a few moments all of the uh, workstations will have that icon uh, displayed up uh, telling the students basically that uh, the desktop has been launched and uh, there's time, it's not time for playing on the computer but to, to listen to the teacher and to take a look at what the teacher is demonstrating. Uh, you can unlock all the accounts to return it after the teacher um, has delivered their micro teach and uh, uh, have gotten their point across. Another interesting thing that the teacher can do are what are called full screen demos and window demos. Um, a full screen demo is what it mentions. Um, it basically will take control of all of the student workstations but display what is shown on the teacher's account. So in other words, you've turned the lab into a fancy multi um, monitor TV station where um, all of the monitors will be displaying the same thing at the same time and as well as what's on the data display unit. Um, and, and again very useful uh, for those type of students that uh, fidget and don't want to necessarily take a look up at the data display unit and in that way you have total control if, as an instructor if you want to get a point across. Um, if you, uh, the window demo uh, brings up a small window so the student can actually take a look at what's being taught but has the options to also uh, work away on the computer if it's something that doesn't require their full focus. So for example, the full screen demo is indicating that the demo is running. All of the screens on the workstation have this exact icon that's being displayed and now the instructor can minimize uh, this application and now the students instead of seeing that icon will actually see the teacher's desktop. Um, so the teacher can actually give a demonstration on what to do or a teaching demonstration. Then you can bring back up the italk application and click on stop demo and then it releases control to the actual students. There are some other features. Uh, one is text message which is not necessarily the most useful for the computer lab here because all the students are very close to where the teacher is. It's a relatively small room. So um, although you can send text messages out to the students, um, for this particular lab, I don't see the advantage of it. The power on button is not required because the icon on the desktop actually powers on all of the workstations. Um, and no, there is no automatic ability to log into uh, the uh, computer accounts automatically to save time due to security issues. You don't want necessarily a program to log on the students um, automatically typing in the username and password because those can uh, warrant serious security problems for the computer lab. On the other hand, we do have the ability to, after our lesson has been completed, to power down 
all of the workstations, and I had mentioned that earlier, and it does it within two seconds. So, the, for example, the JAM accounts are set up where the students do not have the control to um, log out of the uh, computer workstations. Uh, that's the job of the teacher, hence that control has been taken away from the students. By clicking on to power down, it'll ask, are you sure you want to power down all visible computers? You click on yes, it takes two seconds. One, two, now I'm seeing that in the computer lab, all of the uh, workstations have been shut down. Um, leave the monitors on because when you follow the procedure to shut down the computer labs in another YouTube session, you will just simply go and power them all off via a power button. But it is very important that you follow those steps in the preceding YouTube video because you need to follow the power down procedures correctly or you could cause damage to the data display unit. One anomaly um, in this uh, uh, program is, look, it appears on the program that all of the uh, workstations are still logged in, but that's not correct. It's just a little bit out of sync or it doesn't reflect that. At this point though, you can just simply exit out of the application. There's no need to use it. And then you can proceed on with grabbing student work and starting to go through the procedures to shut down the computer server and shut down the uh, computer lab at the end of the lesson. But those uh, will be other YouTube videos that you can uh, view at a, um, at a later date. So this is the AVIT department wishing you happy volunteering and just wanting to let you know that we've set these things up for you to make, it, to make your life a little easier when teaching. Enjoy!